Hello, everyone. Welcome to Elevating Your Life. Today, we are reaching out to the beautiful UK, and we have joining us today, Neil Dolan. He is an award-winning life coach, psychologist, therapist, and author, specialist in well-being and mindset coaching. And Neil, he, he does so much for others. He has so many services. He helps stressed and burned out successful people develop a mindset of abundance so they can lead their calmest, happiest, and most satisfying life. That's just one example of what he does. First off, Neil, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, I would love it if you'd like to share a, a little of your background and kind of what brought you into this work that you do and, you know, how you discovered, you know, that's a passion for you. Right. So my background. So I kind of took the wrong path as a young child. Uh, started really early for me when I was 14. Trying to fit in with the cool kids not really understanding that it's about belonging and not kind of faking it to make it. Uh, so I always struggled with who I was because I was kind of projecting a false sense of self. And then that just led me into a world of kind of drugs and alcohol. So I did, I struggled with addictions for 20 years, which were kind of chronic and pervasive. Uh, so that stemmed all up to me being 37. And then when I was 37 years old, I finally got the funding to go into rehab for six months. And that just changed everything. I finally got that time to kind of explore myself, see what was happening in my mind. And yeah, it changed everything for me. And this is what really got me interested in psychology and the mind, because I wasn't just working through my, my own thoughts and my own processes. I was also helping 40 other residents work through theirs and how they mm -hmm. process and perceive things and lots of similarities, but very diverse as well. And that really got me fascinated about the kind of human mind and kind of our experience, because yeah. it's still a bit of an unknown. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, that, so that's my background. So basically, I came out of rehab and I was so kind of fresh because I'd managed to kind of process all my trauma and things. And I came out really fresh, but I was so fresh. I was like, uh, what are my likes? What are my dislikes? Because I didn't know, because I'd been in addiction for 20 years and consumed in that kind of thinking. So then I just thought, I need to learn because I've not learned I dropped out of school at a young age and I just thought, I need to learn and the mind interests me. So yeah, I then put myself through college to get my qualifications to go to university. I then won a partially funded scholarship to do my undergraduate degree in psychology. Uh, and then actually found out that I was really good at studying <laughs> and I was more intelligent than, than I'd ever realized. <laughs> So then I stayed on because I then won a fully funded Battelle Research Scholarship to do a master's in psychology and psychological research methods. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of my background. And like through that, then my work were even so good that I'm like a lead author on articles in British Journal of Clinical Psychology. Oh, wow. That... Yeah. That is such an inspiration and a point made, Neil, how we can turn our life around. We, you know, no matter how yeah, old yeah. we are, where we at, we can take another path. And gosh, it is, it is just so true how at any age, especially when we're young, we can get caught up in the, well, I need to be what the others want me to be. You yeah. know, it's it's yeah. so easy to to drift that way in life. It, it is, and it's kind of. I had a profound experience in rehab. So I mentioned that kind of when I had that spiritual awakening. 
Shall I share that? Yes, please. So I was working through all my stuff uh, and I was struggling with it. And I was struggling with it because I discovered this afterwards, but what kept me in addiction and what keeps, I think, keeps people in addiction is that belief that I am an addict. And if we believe I am an addict, we believe in addiction ways and we behave by consuming drugs and things. And then at one point during my program, they put me on this, what they call a care and concern contract because I was struggling with stress and being around everybody and kind of the community running itself. So I had to spend 21 days in, let's call it, relative isolation where I couldn't talk to anyone, nobody could give me emotion, any eye contact, that kind of thing. But it was designed therapeutically just so you could have that space, you know, to start processing and reflecting. And I was working through an incident that had happened with my mum and I was writing some written work and, and I just got stuck and I wrote three pages at A4 and it just kept saying, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. Because I couldn't understand how I'd become an addict and why I'd behaved like I had. Uh, and then, yeah, the bell went for like a coffee break. I got up. And I can only call it like a detachment experience where I kind of experienced myself at the side of myself, which like, I was like, what? <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? It was so profound. Uh, but also in that kind of realisation and that moment, it, it, it brought up a question of what, what am I? But then an even bigger question, because I had this kind of detachment experience as to what am I? <laughs> Not just who am I? Yes. And then I kind of realised it suddenly clicked in my, my head that actually I'm not an addict. That's just a behaviour. <sighs> and that actually little Neil got locked in at 14 years old. Little Neil, because I had a good upbringing with good parents, really good morals and values. And then my addiction behaviours sent my moral compass spinning and I was just lost for 20 years. And then it suddenly dawned on me that actually I'm not, I'm not an addict, the addiction had me. Oh. And, and I, I'm not joking, Paula. Like I'll never forget it because in that singular moment of that realisation, it was an instant healing of the self. Because all my guilt and shame, it felt like a big heavy chain I'd been wearing for years, weighing me down. And when I had that realisation that I'm not an addict and that the addiction controlled me, that chain just snapped off and I felt so light and I felt so free. Uh, and I remember one of my key workers, he had a word with me when I came off my contract and he said, how are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm loads better. And he said, oh, I knew something had changed. He said, because he came running across the grass to me last week. He says, and you're like a little kid that had found a pot of gold at Ender a Rainbow. Oh, I love it. Oh, my and, God. And I did. I felt really young again. I felt like young, innocent and free because all that stuff had been gone. Yeah, so, so then I, I just thought, um, moving on like into my career, I thought, what, how can I use this then as a positive? How can I take all that suffering, all that experience and use it as a positive? So then I just realised that, you, do you know what? I need to help people who are struggling with mental health and stress and the, all the coping mechanisms and things like that that keep them locked in that situation. So, yeah, that's my background. Oh, wow. Oh, that is just amazing and, and really inspiring. I mean, and that just that just shows us and tells us so much, Neil, of you know, can be stuck in a situation or a mindset, and you can let that go. It's possible. It's possible. And then see through new eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. Something that you have mentioned is the importance of living aligned to our personal values. Talk about that a little bit for us, please. Right. So, like I said, I left rehab. I went through college, put myself into university. Uh, I, I, I was, I was struggling towards the end of my third year because I'd been like back in school for four years and been like in my like late thirties, nearly forty. I was working twenty five hours a week as well, raising two children. So I was struggling with stress again, and it honestly it got to the point where. I'd, I was, I'd started my master's and I just thought, what's happening here? Because I'm experiencing as much stress as I did back in addiction. But I'm being functional and I'm like hitting targets and hitting goals and everything. And then I just kind of, I shut down this Christmas because I was really struggling with it. And I didn't really talk to much to people. I did interact, but I was just struggling with stress. And I thought, I need to kind of do what I did in rehab and take time away from people to really think things through and understand what's going off. And then when I did that, I was doing some journaling and uh, I started to realise I was chasing socially prescribed goals that weren't my own, oh. values and things. And I suddenly it started to dawn on me because they wanted me to stay on and do a clinical doctorate in clinical psychology. But then the more I reflected, the more I started to realize that actually I placed these clinical psychologists on a pedestal above everybody else. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I'd also got kind of wrapped up into that career, a bit of status big house, all that kind of stuff. And I just realised, wow, <laughs> I come, I came out of rehab really clean and fresh. And then unbeknownst to me, I've been soaking up all this social conditioning in terms of how to think. And that had been driving me thinking. But yeah, as soon as I had that realisation, I just thought, right, they're not my values. I mean, I mean, you know, we do want a good career and things, but it had been it had become too strong a driver that were just pushing me on through things because I stopped getting enjoyment from studying because I was so stressed. So yeah, I just reevaluated everything and decided, right, I'm not going to stay on and do a clinical doctorate because I just want to get out there and get working with people. I've got enough experience. I've done years at university. All I do is read books. I don't, I've never watched the telly really since rehab because you didn't get to see one. So I know enough, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just thought, and my other big decision for that was, I found out during research and things, because I was doing a master's in research, Standardised manualised therapy in the UK, when you look at the data, it only works for less than 50% of people. And then when you factor other things into how people respond to questionnaires in a socially desirable way, and they say they're better than they are, it drops it down to about, I think it's 43%. And straight away, my thinking was, because I'd been under the health service and under a psychiatrist myself in the past and it didn't work for me, I just thought, I can't go into a job where out of every three people I see, I'm only helping one <sighs> and two are not getting better. Because in my own experience, I was under NHS for years and I never got better. And because they sell it as it's a proven effective treatment, it just reinforced my belief that I was broken and I couldn't be fixed. Mm -hmm. So then I just thought, right, how can I help people in the best way I know? And I just thought that I'll train in loads of other stuff like clinical hypnosis, NLP, coaching, whatever I can. And then that way, when I work with clients, I can tailor a very bespoke package for them that suits their individual needs. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, and I've done really well through it. I get really good results. And it oh. just, 
it, it just lights my life. It just lights my life up when I see people come to me stressed out, lost in the thinking, beating themselves up, and then over the process of like treatment and coaching with me, you just see the faces get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then they're able to access the resources again that's within them. So, yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and, you know, to make such a difference in lives. And, you know, it's, isn't it true that when we touch, touch into something that's a passion for us and go that direction instead of kind of what everyone thinks we should or what we kind of think we should, mm -hmm. so much happens and changes when we follow our passion. It's, it's like we bloom, isn't it? It does, and I think it's because when we really tap into our passion, I think we're reconnecting with our authentic self. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of us conditioning with, we end up attached to kind of a, a bit of a projected unauthentic self. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's so fascinating, I think, how in life, you can ha think you have it all figured out and you're going to do this and then you discover something else that's a great passion for you and you go that route and you're doing something completely different. But, you know, you love it. I, I went to college to be an accountant. I got my degree. I had it all figured out, but I worked in a restaurant during college and I fell in love with restaurant work. So I ended up becoming a restaurant manager and owner for, you know, yeah. 27 years. But, you know, we just do what you know, turns us on. And that's exciting to think, yeah, yeah. you know, find what turns me on. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And follow uh, it. Uh, and also because, because I did that deep exploration and kind of went back to my authentic self yeah, and really identified yeah. my own personal values that were really important to me, that even changed the way that I now live and, and, and I want kind of, I think this should be kind of taught as something in schools. So in schooling and stuff, it's about grades, isn't it? And getting good grades. It's always about the end goal and that kind of thing. But when you know your values, so like my top four values are like cash, passion, connection, freedom, and joy. And it works like this, my passion for me in mind, helps me to connect to people in a really deep and meaningful way. And when I'm helping them, I see that sense of freedom in them. It reminds me of my freedom from my own mental health. And then everything's joyful. <sighs> so I've set my life up so that every day I'm stepping into my values <sighs> because that's where self-esteem comes from. If we're fulfilling our values, we feel pretty good and rock solid about ourselves. But like you said about how things change, I do set myself goals, right? But I never fully reach the goal because the goal is just a north star that points the path. Oh. For me, it's about walking the path every day. So as I get towards the goal, end, ending my goal, I start coming up with another goal so I can create another North Star and have another path where I can walk my values every day. I and I just find that. it such a holistic way to live. It, it supports my well-being so much. Yeah, because, oh, I love that, the North Star, because we are on a continual path, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I love that, Neil. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what a great analogy. That is just beautiful. Well, well, for everyone listening out there thinking, oh, I'd love to connect and find out more. Neil, what kind of services can do you offer to people? And share with us your, your website, how people can learn more about what you do and maybe. All right. So let's go. Because of my own stress, I, I specialised in stress. That's what my master's and everything was in. Uh, so my main services is my coaching service. 
So that's kind of focusing on well-being. It's all stress reduction stuff, uh, getting people's thinking cleared up. I kind of teach people how to self-regulate the nervous system as well, because that's where all this stress comes from. That's where all this distorted thinking comes from. So it's a very holistic approach. So I, I help lots of people come off antidepressants and stuff that's been stuck on them for years. But they have to understand how to self-regulate the nervous system. So I do that. And then once I've got people feeling calmed and relaxed again, they can start to access their inner resources, things like determination, persistence, creativity, insight, because that's what stress does. It, it, it gives us tunnel vision and we can't access as wider resources up to the big side where there's love, we get cut off from it. That's what stress does. It cuts us off to us resources. So I help people to reconnect with their authentic self and tap back into their inner resources. And then I help them build a mindset of abundance then so that they're kind of pretty set up to get on with life and also upskilled. I'm quite psychoeducational, and then I upskill them as well with the tools and the resources to manage any future stresses because life does have a bit ups and downs. So yeah. if anybody's interested, if you jump on and visit my website, which is neildolan.com, and that's spelled N-E-I-L-D-O-L-A-N.com. And yeah, if anybody wants to chat, there's a link on there, just book in for a 20 minute chat. And I'm more than open to chatting. I love connecting with people. I just love connecting with people. Oh, man, you have just so much to offer and you do so much for everyone. And I love what you said about stress, how it kind of keeps us in a tunnel. That That is really true, isn't it? Yes, I like, I'm very visual, so it's kind of, if you imagine, you know, an archer, a shooting target, right, it's got consecutive rings. So when we're stressed, all we can see is that centre ring, and that's his flight or flight response. And that's, and that's why with stress, we're reactive, and we snap at people, and then we beat ourselves up for snapping at people, but we're not aware that we've lost access to kind of patience, understanding being compassionate and empathy with people because we're in flight or flight response and we can't access mm -hmm. any other resources and that's what stress does yeah and gosh when we open up to that compassion and kindness oh my gosh it's not just a gift for others and those around us it's such a gift we give ourselves isn't it it is yeah yeah because I've kind of took it a little step further. So I started meditating as well a couple of years ago when I was struggling with stress. So I'm a bit passionate meditator. So I've done quite a few of their 10 day silent retreats. And uh, I'm also excited because in February, I start on the mindful mindfulness meditation teacher certification program oh. with Jack Caulfield and Tara back. So that's weekly for two years. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's because I get exciting. because in second year as well, they want you to go out delivering it in community. And I've already got that kind of set up because we go to a local church and as pastors said we can use all so I can start delivering that in my local community for free as well. So because another big thing I'll just quickly mention, another big thing for me and my, my well-being is not always getting paid to help. I do lots of voluntary work because it gives me a connection to an even wider community. Uh, and I, there's a couple of guys, I can't do that many people. I, I do what I can fit in. So there's a couple of guys I've been coaching that graduated from a rehab near me. So I've been coaching them over the last year, weekly, face to face. And yeah, they're just really, they're doing really well. They're doing really well. They're doing so well. Oh, yeah. Neil, you are so awesome. Oh, my gosh. I am just, oh, I'm so touched. I'm just yeah. so thrilled to meet you and share you with everyone. Oh, my gosh. And that sounds so exciting next year. So mm. that's going to start in February. February, yeah. Yeah, February. Yeah. So I, I, for years online training, uh, but also it's going to be very good for me to take my own practice even deeper. 
Yes. Yes. And then, like I said, that second year, you're delivering it in your local community. You've got weekly classes. You've got mentors to support you and everything. So, yeah, I can't wait. Oh, that is so exciting. Oh, my gosh. And oh, I can only imagine the lives you've touched and the difference you've made for others. And I really want to give you a big heartfelt thank you for that, Neil. Yeah. That's really a special gift for so many and for the world. It really oh, is. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and to help others take those steps and, you know, change their situation, their mindset. It's huge. You're changing lives. That's yeah, great. because I just, I don't want anybody to suffer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't want anybody to suffer. And I fully believe that. We've all got such, we've all got this huge untapped potential, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to access it just because as, as the world evolves, we make it more and more complex and more complicated, mm -hmm. and more stressful. And it just, I think it just cuts more and more people off because, yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I'm big on, I'm big on. Meditation should be taught in schools from a very young age. Oh, I love that age. idea because it's yeah. in the relaxed mode. We just, yeah. And, yeah. but you know, what's so wonderful is, is having people like you, people out there in the world. There's so many loving, caring people that want to help each other and just knowing that and knowing when we're going through struggles that that we're really we're not alone that is really beautiful no because we're all we're all connected way more than we yes. realize yes when i did my first be passionate 10-day course I, I had some very like visual realizations in that uh and it just kind of We kind of perceive the world through a, like a, a lens of separation and that we're all separate. Does that make sense? And yeah. then like, this visualization comes to me. So if you can imagine a white silk scarf laid out in front of you, and if I pinch a point and pull it up, that's me. If I pinch a point there and pull it up, that's Paula. <sighs> but, but we're connected in this like unified field of awareness. I think we're just manifested through kind of bodies, but then we think we're separate because that's where suffering comes from. I think loneliness, feeling isolated and separate. Yeah. But we're not. Yes, we're not. We're connected. You're my energy brother. <laughs> I love it. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today. And check out more about Neil at neildolan.com. Oh, just such a gift. I'm so grateful to everyone. Love, hugs, and blessings. And Neil, thank you so much. Love, hugs, and blessings to the UK. This has been so fantastic. I'm just honored to share you with everyone. Right, thank you. My gratitude to you, Paul, for having me. Thank you.